testing one two three hey y'all it's good you're hurting hippie it's wednesday it's hump day it's the middle of the week it's part way through it's a struggle sometimes hey cheers to all of you shout out to beyond i am going to i'm still studying to find some high CBC and CBG strains. CBG, you gotta remember, is something you won't find too often because as a plant ages, CBG changes to THC. Uh, and a few other things. It, it's, it's kind of a precursor chemical, but it's also good for us. So it, it's difficult to find, but I'm gonna find out more and answer your questions. So today I'm skipping to the next person who requested something, John Johnson. Uh, so beyond, please be patient, it's coming. Uh, John Johnson, you asked me, and I've discussed it a few times, but you know what? A lot of people don't go back onto the videos. And I don't blame them. I have 1,600 videos, almost 1,700. So it's kind of hard to just search for a certain kind. He wanted to know, how did I get out of my pharmaceutical prison? How did I escape pharma products? And I got to tell you, this may take a little longer than usual, and it's a worthwhile talk. It's not an easy talk. I have to bear my soul a little bit for this. So uh, I go way back 2007, 2008. I was starting to be put on pharmaceuticals for heavy back pain. At first, they called it spondylosis, uh, a degradation of some of the bones from C4 three to C7. I had broken my neck back in 88, so there was also just so much uh, arthritic type pain. That's what was starting, but at the same point, uh, life was hitting me pretty hard, and uh, my mom was getting really, really sick, and my mom and I were really close, and the, the friendship that we had was deteriorating because we couldn't spend any time, and I knew she wasn't long for the world. All of that tied together had me sitting, and I remember the discussion clearly, had me sitting in my doctor's office with my new wife at the time she we had only been married two years and he was telling me that i need to go on some pharmaceuticals for my back and some uh antidepressants for for my sadness for my depression i was arguing don't want i just want to be natural i just want to stay away from all this heavy stuff and he asked if he could talk with me privately. And I remember it really well. He took me into a different room and he's, and I wish I, I didn't feel so, because he's a good friend. I, I appreciate my doctor. He's retired now, just last month. And he's looked after me for a decade, more than a decade. And he's done the best out of any of them. But I do say this was a mistake. And I think he does too in hindsight, uh, I had never taken, well, I had taken pharmaceuticals, but never done well by them. They've made me sick. They've, I'm not allergic, just sensitive, maybe. And I really didn't want to go on them. And uh, he took me to this room and he told me, he says, Gord, if you had if you were dying in the hospital of pneumonia, you wouldn't say, I want to do it naturally, don't give me any antibiotics. If you got to save your life, you got to save your life. And sometimes that means chemicals. And he said, depression is exactly like that. It is an ailment. Just because it's in the brain 
doesn't mean we don't treat it the same by putting chemicals in that we feel your body is lacking in or not producing or needs temporarily and that's what we're going to do now I really wish that I had more strength then but I was starting to fall apart and yeah there's a few of you who have made comments and you're not in the comment section anymore because I I just don't accept armchair psychiatry who have said Gord you're a, you're this much of a man of what you used to be and I, I agree but you're saying it in an insulting way I am I I broke I had a mental breakdown and a physical breakdown I'm recovering slowly from the mental and the physical is just going to be with me the rest of my life unless something magical comes along but anyways I'm I keep I said this would be a long one I keep veering down the side roads as my mom used to always do a story of her going to the store usually took about an hour because you had to take all these side roads anyways that was a side road <laughs> get my hang on a sec get my head together sorry when I speak of mom I get sad I miss her but I <clears throat> yeah so at that time they they started me on propanolol and topamax that was for bringing inflammation down try to reduce what I was getting migraines every like f for five or six days a day or two break and then five or six days I was almost migraine 100 percent of the time so uh the propanolol and topamax brought my headaches down maybe 50 percent which was beautiful I mean that kind of sold me on hey this is kind of working and put me on Wellbutrin and later when I complained that I'm getting angry and I'm getting um, really tired and, and uh, short-tempered and then he put me on Ciprolex with the Wellbutrin and there were a few others in there that I just can't remember my friends but those were the main ones uh, I for a while there there was a total of eight and then we and then I got them to bring it down to a couple couple and it was around oh 2000 2012 2013 somewhere around there where I was realizing me and my wife hang on I think the neighbors leave in just a minute so funny downstairs neighbor walked right past me doesn't even notice me maybe if I were talking it would be different so I <clears throat> I was noticing a horrible change in, and it took you it took it was over the years I was getting more and more angry less and less patient uh, road rage like crazy and I wasn't liking that and I wasn't realizing there was another piece but let me let me not get ahead of myself because of the road rage a few incidences of it I went back to my doctor and I said you know this isn't working and so he did titrate me off of the Wellbutrin then and that one wasn't too difficult to leave you know every second day I'd skip a pill and then every third day I'd skip another pill it it didn't take too long but it didn't make much change then I started realizing that my wife and I were not getting along and no it wasn't until she actually just brought it to me and said you're a jerk you don't treat me nice you you're you're an ass you never listen to me you push me away you leave all the time I was never that guy I was never that guy and it took me a while to realize I am that guy it was probably not until 2014 that I went to him and I said listen we gotta get off of this stuff and so he told me he's he said something about I thought I heard 10%, reduced 10% every day of the Ciprolex. 
I and <laughs> and he didn't really give it much. I don't want to get I don't know if he watches, but I don't want him bothered by this. But I misunderstood. However, he said to titrate off the Ciprolex. He said, be careful. It's an uptake inhibitor. It's going to take some time. I totally misread it. I went off of it within about three days. And this is no word of a lie. I, first of all, I was getting really strange brain sounds. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Wow, this is getting long. I, I was getting really bad brain zaps. And I was getting this odd odd feeling and then I went out for a drive to to with my camera gear uh, I was doing a lot of photography back then and really my photography was good uh, it was the only time I could concentrate so I go on I went on a drive I don't remember the drive but I remember coming coming into cognition uh, two hours away from home in the mountains on a very very small road and it really looked like I was trying to drive off the edge this hurts to bring this up because because I was lost I had no phone reception and I decided oh my god this is getting awful this is getting hard uh, I slowly drove towards a creek I knew that was there and I got a whole bunch of water in my system and because of the way it was interrupting with my brain uh, it took me about six hours to drive home so I did and then I talked to my doctor he said get back on that stuff get back on it and we'll talk about it once you're healthy again and I took a Ciprolex as soon as I got home and I got back onto it and all those issues went away of course it did but I knew I had to get off of it it was I was hurting my family but little did I know it was already too late she had all my wife had already decided on leaving uh, and it, the next few months June 2015 she left with my boy And it was then that I said, get me off of all of this stuff. Make a plan. Get me off of it. And we worked on the Ciprolex first. And, that, and no kidding, it was four and a half months of very slow titration downward of my dose to get off the Ciprolex. During that time, we slowly got off the other stuff. But there it was, uh, the end of... 2015 and I was finally off the Ciprolex but I was not off the problems I started did, I did not get the withdrawals until after I f went two three days without taking any Ciprolex in my system at all then the withdrawals came the emotional troubles the uh, but worse brain zaps bzz, 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 in your brain constantly all day every day all night every night and this went on for months. I almost went back on Ciprolex again just because of those brain zaps. They were driving me insane. And uh, I don't think I could have done it. Well, maybe if I had had a wife and a child around. I didn't have my child around. And so I think that was handy because I was able to just sit at home and cry and cover my head and I think it caused a lot of damage because it was for the next year that I had quite a few brushes with uh, the suicide prevention hotline it was a tough tough time one that I don't like remembering but you have to work through these things to help other people it was worth the trouble but I tell people now if you're going to go off of pharmaceuticals really really talk closely with your doctor and it's not a journey for the weak. You have to be strong of mind and will to make it through. It's not easy. Is it worth it? 
I'm here now three years free of these things. There's no more brain zaps. There's no more difficulty. There may be long-term damage, maybe. Uh, but I'll never know. I'll never know. I'm not going to test and I'm not going to get any more. Now, a doctor has a hard time getting me to take a Tylenol 3. I just don't trust the other medicine anymore. I would rather live in pain than go through the shit I've gone through. And it destroyed my second marriage. I'll never get that back. Her and I have talked about it. I, she says I'm back to the old guy that she fell in love with, but she's not in love with me. Um, those those drugs and my reaction to them took away an important part of my life. Got my boy back and we've got a good relationship. But I often wake up sad and wishing I could go back to 2007 and tell that doctor, absolutely not, absolutely not. Druthers, can you go back? You can't go back. So you have to make the best of the day you're in. <sighs> Friends, that was quite a ride. I don't know if you stayed with me to the end. Let me know if you did. Peace and cheers. Love and harmony. Find somebody with a smile. Give them yours. It's beautiful.